And I need to say this to anyone who is having like doubts if they got what it takes. I had 10 years experience as a CEO and I had an MBA from a top, like we're talking about a top 10 business school in the world. And I had no clue what I was doing. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 238 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. You are going to be really happy you stopped by today. If you own an online business and you don't think seven figures is realistic, you are going to love this episode. Sigrun is someone that I have known for years now. I've been on her podcast. I'm so happy to bring her here to you today. But she really is Europe's number one online business mentor, like number one. This woman has helped more other women around the world hit seven figures through their online businesses, specifically by using courses. And what I love about Sigrun is her honesty, her accessibility, and how much she's willing to share all the mistakes and all the internal mindset pieces where you're like, I am too dumb to do this. I can't do this for other people. All those thoughts that every single one of us have as we're building and wanting to help more people. So if you've had those thoughts of maybe I can't do this, maybe I'm not the one for this, or who the heck am I to make more money? Today's conversation might just change how you view that. Sigrun is an award-winning business coach, best-selling author, international speaker, and host of the Sigrun Show podcast. She's been called the leading business mentor for online entrepreneurs in Europe, and she is on a mission to accelerate gender equality, yes please, through female entrepreneurship and helps women start and scale their online businesses to seven figures with her tough love and no-nonsense approach to online business. Sounds like someone you know? (laughs) Sigrun has been featured in Forbes, Time, and numerous leading media publications in Europe. In 2022, she accepted the Hall of Fame of Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year Award in Switzerland. And in 2021, she won five German Stevie Awards as the Hero of the Year, Entrepreneur of the Year, Solopreneur of the Year, Manager of the Year, and Sales Achievement of the Year. Her latest book is available on Amazon, but because you're here... With the Game on Girlfriend podcast, you get it for free. The link is in the show notes or underneath this video if you are watching on YouTube. You guys, you are going to love this conversation. It's open and honest. It's like the two of us had a cup of coffee together and you get to listen in. Pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Sigrun, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm so happy you're here. It's so nice to swap with you like this. Thank you for having me, Sarah. I'm so excited that we get to talk today. I know. I love it. We had the best conversation on your podcast. I hear about it often. People are like, I loved your podcast with her. I was like, well, she's a great host. So now we get to turn the tables (laughs) and have you here as well with all the girlfriends. And I do want to start off by asking you, I know you have had an entrepreneurial journey and the corporate journey, all of these wonderful experiences that so many of us are going through. But I got to ask you, as we dive in out of all the things on planet Earth that Sigrun could have done, all the things you could have done in your world, why is this what you do? Well, one thing led to another. Like in so many cases, I did have what I thought was my dream job, being a CEO of IT company. I went from running a 15-people company all the way to 74 employees, I was doing turnarounds, mergers, fast growth, working on acquisitions, working for venture capital. It was a quite exciting time. And then I had suddenly a board that wanted a puppet and not a real CEO. And I was glad to be experienced enough at that point to say, no, I'm a CEO. So you don't tell me whether I give my employees soda or pizza, like that just goes a (laughs) bull. That is not applicable. And so I left and I was in a six month garden leave, as you call it, where I didn't have to look for a job. And I met my husband then in London, fell in love. He was living in Switzerland. I had been living in Iceland before and uh, I decided to go to Switzerland and it took me six months to find a job. Hmm. Uh, I found a job in a small medical technology company. I was not the CEO anymore. I was more like a project manager. Sometimes I was called an MD, but the company was like one person. So uh, it was quite different from the busy lifestyle I had before. And my career was on the way up. Like I just imagined the next company being 100 or 200 employees and even bigger in Iceland. 
But suddenly I found myself in Switzerland having to start from scratch and build my reputation and career. And I was willing to work very hard. The working hours are quite long in Switzerland and compared to Iceland, you know, and the Nordics, we are more social working hours, 35 hours a week in Switzerland, 42 hours. And I was like, oh, wow, this is a different atmosphere. <laughs> and I became sick. I was sitting at my desk all day. And I must admit in the evening too, because I had a photography hobby and loved to edit pictures and I developed repetitive straight injury in my neck and shoulder. Oh my God. And, uh, it started with headaches on Fridays and then Thursdays and th then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And eventually I just could not work. And I knew this was serious. I'm a hardworking person. I, I love to do my job. I would not call in sick unless it's really serious. And the first doctors were very kind of like, yeah, you'll stay at home for six weeks and then you'll go back. And I'm like, I don't think, I think this is more serious than that. And I started to do my own research and I eventually found out by describing all my symptoms. We didn't have chastity pee back then, but with a lot of research, I found out that I had repetitive strain injury mm. and eventually I came to the right doctor after a three month wait. And he said, yeah, you're not going back anytime soon. And you have to do a full on physio, like physiotherapy, three times a week, massage, yeah. two times stretching, go for daily walks twice a day. Like it was a full time job to heal. Mm -hmm. And after seven months, I finally felt fit enough to go back to work. But of course, in the meantime, they had fired me for being sick. Of but course. been offered a job, the universe provides the day before I got fired, I get offered a job. And I'm very honest to this company telling them that I'm sick and I have to. So in the beginning, we had a good solution. I was a contractor mm -hmm. for several months to settle in to see that I could actually work. But through this experience, when you're seven months sick and you're sitting on the sofa, you can't sit at the computer for more than 10 minutes a day. Then I get another job that I don't really love. I have home office, which I love, actually. I love the home office part. But then I had to drive to my clients who were an hour or two away and my mm -hmm. paid flare up and I said, Ugh, I can't do this. I yeah. just can't do this. So can I work for another person or another company now? Like maybe I have to work for myself. So the dream of having my own business was there, but it was always like one day or when I get an amazing idea in the shower or during a walk. And so yeah, I found myself more pressed for time to kind of take this decision. And I knew what I wanted. And I knew what I did want. I knew that I want to work from home because I always already fell in love with home office with my last company that I worked for. I knew that I want to be able to have flexible working hours because I come from Iceland and I was living in Switzerland with my husband. So the fact that if you work for someone else and in Europe, you have 20 days or 25 days holidays. I know in the US, it's a lot less. I was like, I cannot spend so little time in my home country. I want to be able to be 50% in Iceland and 50% in Switzerland. That would be my dream solution. So I started to make a list of mm. all things that are a must have and things that are nice to have. And I still didn't have the business idea. I was just designing my lifestyle. Got it. This is what I want in my life. This is how my work day looks like. Mm. What I'm actually doing was more secondary to me. And then I start to think, okay, what I can do. Obviously, it's online business, like obviously. But what type of an online business I did? Oh, I was thinking, do I write books and publish them? Maybe travel books because I love to travel. Am I a management consultant advising startups? Because I had already 10 years experience as a CEO working with small companies. And I had this list of ideas and I was like, and then of course, business coach came up. I was a Dale Carnegie trainer. I loved being a Dale Carnegie trainer. And I had, you know, I had an MBA. I had the CEO experience. I had everything you need to be a good business coach. But there is this taint on the word coach. Like, like not all coaches are experienced. Exactly. Not all coaches are educated. They're not all trained in coaching. Mm -hmm. And they decided yesterday they want to be a coach. And I was like, I don't want to put myself in the bucket with these people. Uh, oh, been there. Yes. Yes. I had these, uh, what do you call, prejudiced. 
Yeah, I get prejudice. Yes, but it's a well-founded one. Yes, and I've yeah. had the same fears myself. I get it. So I put it on the lowest on the list of things I could do. And then I went on a journey. And if you read the book, The Alchemist. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I felt like the boy in the book Alchemist. Mm. Like, uh, going around in circles. <laughs> like, what, what can I do as an online business? Mm. And actually, I even started or I, I test started an online shop with design products from Iceland. Okay. Probably three to four months on it. I had like a shop on, on, on Shopify. You know, I didn't release it. It was just more like I put test products. I went to fairs. I talked to designers. I had two business partners. I was getting quite serious. And then I went on Google Keywords and nobody is looking for design from Iceland. And I'm like, <laughs> not a big business. And I also was like, oh, then you have returns and then it's the wrong size, so different color. And I'm like, I don't want to do ship products. I want to have it easy. I want it to have a service, like something I can sell digitally yeah. and deliver over Zoom or, mm. or a platform. Yeah, so I was like the boy in the alchemist. And I had this treasure inside of me mm. and I was avoiding it because of prejudice or whatever. And after 18 months, I'm sad to say, 18 months, mm. I woke up one day and I was very frustrated with myself. And I said, and I heard my friends sign up for a course. I think that was my wake up call. Ah, and okay. I heard them sign up for a course. And it was a $500 course. So I was like, okay, I'll do it too. I'll sign up for this course. It was a business coach and it was accountability. It was a very simple course. And I'm like, I can do that. Yeah, you're like, I know this stuff. Yeah. It felt so easy what the woman was doing. You know, not, not discrediting her in any way, but joining this course, it was a wake-up call like, Okay, I can do this. Like you're an oh. expert at it. I'm sure you must have been like, wait a minute, this is packaging my expertise. I know this. Yeah, I can totally get that. But it's funny that sometimes makes... when we're an expert, we miss it, right? We're like, yeah. oh, but that's just easy. Yeah. yeah. So I think the whole journey, like my alchemist journey, was that I guess I didn't see myself as being good enough, expert enough, mm -hmm. as a business coach. And there I saw someone offering something and I was like, this is a no-brainer for me. Like, this is easy peasy. And this was in November 2013. And I was like, I'm starting 1st of January. And I gave myself two days to set up a website. I had been switching the theme of my WordPress five times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Them, women, we are just, it's perfectionist. And this is just fear and fancy shoes, Elizabeth Gilton says. Yeah. And so... I put finally up a website. I said, this is good enough. And I wrote my first blog post and it was called something like, start before you're ready is the only way. I mean, that's perfect. Oh my <laughs> God. And I love the authenticity of that too. You're like, I think I wrote this for me, but you can oh. read it too. Yeah. <laughs> my blog posts are written for me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Wow. And then what happened? So you launched the first blog post and then like, what was it? Crickets? Did it happen quickly? Like what happened? Well, I got friends and family to sign up for my newsletter. <laughs> I love it. I had 30 people on there. Mm -hmm. And then January passed. I didn't sell anything. I did run like a beta round of a similar program mm -hmm. as I was in November. But of course, I'm, I'm very aware not to copy other people. Right. So I know you can get expi inspired, you can emulate, you can learn, but it would be really against my values if I had offered a course like I was in just two months earlier. But I ran a course, accountability program for three weeks with five friends just to, I don't know, it was more for myself to prove mm -hmm. to myself that they got value out of it. So it was like a bit around and I never tried to sell the program after that. But it was, it got me going. So January passed and then February passed. <laughs> I blocked the yeah. hours, mm -hmm. hoping that people would join my email list. And it wasn't, uh, actually in February, I came up with a freebie because I was like, oh, you need a freebie if you're building an online business. 
I was not thinking of selling. I was thinking just marketing was all in my head. So wrong. You're so wrong. If I was starting again today, you find a person and you sell them something. Mm-hmm. And then you can think about your marketing. Because otherwise, you just, you have no business, right? You don't have no business. Yeah. Just an yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't need to do so much marketing to get your first one, two, three, four, five, even 10 clients. It's after that you need the marketing or your first clients are just friends or friends of friends. And so, yeah. So in, in February, I created a freebie, how to grow your Facebook page organic reach. Now, because I had used the tool and I had tracked then follow what you can do. And really my engagement and reach was fantastic. So I started to, I advertised this for two weeks. Well, when I say advertise, like I didn't pay for advertising. I just promote. You just talked about it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Like, hey guys, come get this thing. I'll give it to you for free. That kind of advertising. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. 70 people sign up. I was like, amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. Starting out with 70 people signing up. Well, instead of Facebook group, I got to admit that during this period where I was lost in the alchemist world, yes, was in a face, I was in a couple of entrepreneurial Facebook groups. And because I didn't have a business idea, I had no agenda. Right. But I was one of the most helpful people in the group. I love this. So what happens when someone like myself finally figures out what she wants to do and you share that, even if you can't share it in the groups you're a part of, when you share it on your personal profile, these people will see it that you've been helping in the last months, or even in my case, last 18 months. <laughs> and they will trust you because you've been helping for free without an agenda. Yes. Now, I think I saw it all as a waste of time, you know, Did when I was- Really? Oh, that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was like, uh, cause you know, I was at home. Being half sick, you know, not not, not like completely sick, uh, still recovering. I had lost my second job, the one that I had to talk to the clients. Uh, I'd lost that one. I was on an unemployment benefits. I was sitting at home. My husband is going to work. And then he comes back from home from work. And he's like, oh, what did you do today? And I'm like, oh, it was in Facebook groups. I got some questions in Facebook groups. Right. I can get why you're sitting there going, what am I doing? Yeah, I mean, that is a strategy. I have seen, I've been taught that yeah. strategy. I teach that strategy. Like, there's so I know. many different ways that's so helpful. And there you were, you just still yeah. into it. Amazing. Unless it's later than it was a strategy. Maybe uh, in the back of my head, it was strategic, but it didn't feel very strategic. Like, you know, because I didn't have the agenda. Exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah, strategic. Then you do have an agenda. and But I do recommend clients to do this. And it's a fantastic way to build credibility. Yes, it's yeah. time intensive. But while you're not making any money, this is one of the best things you can do. Just you use your time to be helpful. And you've helped a lot of people. There's a saying, if you want to make a billion dollars, help a billion people. That's right. Well, and I always say to people too, money comes into your business through people. It doesn't come any other way. So if you're meeting more people and helping more people, eventually those people will help bring money into the business. That's brilliant. I love that you stumbled into this, like accidentally, non-strategically, no agenda, help a billion people. Okay. That the freebie wasn't a good idea. How, why? You know, I, I, I didn't want to be known for, I realized. Oh, I see. I didn't want to be known for Facebook organic reach. And this Got is. It typical beginner mistake you're just scrambling for some freebie ideas and you grab the next one and then you're like do I want to be known for this and I'm like so after two weeks I took it away I had put so much effort into creating this amazing four-part video series of course I didn't sell anything after it you know (laughs) the next day I did that was better I saw all these people I realized that my problem my alchemist journey of not figuring out what I want was a very common problem. Mm -hmm. Very. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Uh, Especially like you're a woman, you are in corporate, you want to start an online business or you've started and you're not sure you started the right thing. Yes. And I, and I think sometimes good ideas, you just have to act very fast before the, what does he say in magic? Elizabeth Gilbert, you know. Oh, if you don't, if you don't express it, the universe will find someone who will. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going with that one. Yeah. But this idea of passion a thorn. 
So the idea was that it's a seven day, almost like a boot camp, where you find your true passion and the right business idea. And me being a little bit of a slave driver, I thought seven days, that's great. And because I had built this and I had the idea and I wanted it to start it one week later, which is wow. a hor horrible idea. What all only two weeks, three weeks, even four weeks to market something. And I gave myself one week because I was like oh. urgently wanting to implement this. Yeah. And there was a little agenda there. There was a course starting later that I knew of, a famous big online course. And I thought, what if they do my course first and then they do better in that program? So my mm -hmm. program should be finished before they start. I was not with the agenda of selling, but agenda of they will not have time to do this program. That's fascinating. Okay. That was, I mean, that was really, gosh, what did, I want to say ambitious, but also like shockingly wise. <laughs> like, like there was like a really smart little thread through there, Zigrun, of like, mm, I think I'm going to get this done before I get on lunch. I love that. Very, very ambitious. 134. 134 people signing up. I was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. In only seven days. Wow. And I sat down the evening before, Sunday evening, and created the first module. And then every evening I sat down and created the next one. Nothing was prepared before I promoted it. Only the energy. Of yeah. Wow. And of course, taking a bet, I had this exercise that, you know, what is a must have? What is a nice to have? I gave them the exercises that I had done for myself to mm -hmm. find my own business idea. And it worked like magic. It was so beautiful. The testimonials I got, it was amazing. They said seven days was a little bit fast. Yeah. So I thought <laughs> like possibly this should be a four week course in the yeah. future. Yeah. Let us breathe. Let us breathe as we go through this journey with you. Yes. <laughs> We have other things to do. We maybe have a full-time job and I was expecting to do an exercise every single day. But what I do after that, normally, you know, what I did essentially was a seven-day free challenge. We didn't call it back. The name challenge came up later in online business. And I just like, thank you for participating. Oh my God. I You're like, I don't even know what just happened, but thanks. Bye. So yeah. I, you didn't even have a back end plan for that or like, what should they do no. next with me? Or what can I offer? There's no way if you just did it in seven days. I did not have a plan. What may happen after the program? Yeah, I like to tell this story because uh, it's so obvious in hindsight how silly that was. Because obviously, if you offer something for free, there will be people that want to work with you. Mm. And, and then you are stealing from them the joy of buying from you. So it's not just about you wanting to make money. It's more like there are these people and they're like, what? There's there's no next step. I was not selling anything yet and we're already in middle of March. And I didn't even have anything on my website. But I thought after this challenge, I didn't even realize my mistake until a little bit later. Right. It was great. So happy about the testimonials. And I'm like, I mean, I it is. But I mean, come on, let's give you some credit. That many people in seven days, I mean, that really is saying something. It also points to how much value you were providing in those groups all that time. I mean, that's a lot of people in seven days. So you yeah. had some massive success. You just didn't yet have the, oh, I'm running a business brain on it yet. That's all. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had no idea. I finally put an offer on my website, one hour business coaching, and then I struggled with the price. But I was living in Switzerland where prices are quite high. I had been working at a medical technology company and the engineers fresh from university were charging the company as a contractor, $180 oh an hour. Right out, right out of school. Wow. Right out of school. And I thought to myself, I cannot go lower than that. So oh. I put $180 and I was like, I don't know, is that too much or, but somebody on 26th of March, 2014, somebody bought. Oh, I love that you know the day. That's so good. Oh, my God. That feeling, though, isn't that the best? Like, any business owner listening or watching, right? Like, that feeling of, like, oh, my gosh, I just did something. It is, like, the best. I felt in that moment that this would work out. Yes. That was the feeling I got. This will work out. I was obviously not clear on what I was doing. I was all over the place. 
And even, and I need to say this to anyone who is having like doubts if they've got what it takes. I had 10 years experience as a CEO and I had an MBA from a top, like we're talking about a top 10 business school in the world. And I had no clue what I was doing. So if I need help, everyone else need help. Yeah. Well, it's fun. I'm so glad you said that because I was actually going to bring that back around to be like, but look at everything you'd already done. Look at like, I call it like the street cred that you had in in knowing what a startup takes, knowing what it is to manage people, knowing when to delegate, not delegate, when the money comes in, what it's like to be micromanaged. Like you have all of this experience on top of the MBA. Thank you very much. And you're like, I don't know if I can do this. It's, a, I mean, our ability to doubt ourselves and what we're capable of is almost astonishing at times. I mean, it's really amazing that there you were going. Can I- when you had a team and yeah. you pass all this help and then you are on your own and you have to do everything. It's setting up the newsletter on the email or the blog post. There's no one, literally no one helping you. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, I didn't have a strategy. And I think online business is just so different. You know, at the end of the day, it's a business. But there's so much marketing stuff that I had never had to do. Like I was running out. Right. Come, we would just run ads in a big a newspaper and we would sell laptops. Or if I was selling software, we would contact the 100 largest companies in Iceland and some of them would buy. And that was all we had to do. Like marketing is often not the skill that you have, even if you've been running a company. I totally uh, agree. Because also you can have a whole department doing that too, right? Yeah. That you don't hear like, great, report up to me. Good job. You did. But to then have to go out there and do it yourself, boy, it really is an entirely different situation. And I love that you're highlighting that because I think it's the part that really messes people up. There's that yeah. idea of like, oh, I'm selling me, first of all. Like, oh, am I good enough to sell what just I do? I don't know. Versus when you work for a business... You could say, oh, yeah, this is what the business does. It's really great. And so making that mindset shift, even if you're a solopreneur and you're doing everything, that is no joke. I mean, that takes a lot of internal, I think, courage and grit to really get to that point where you're like, I can do this. I can charge $180. Yeah. And look, somebody just bought it. Yeah. It's amazing. What an adventure you've had. Yeah. And then it's fun to look back. Now I've made, you know, over $18 million. US dollars. It's been 10 years, 10 years. Uh, But the first year, uh, the first nine months is what I call spaghetti marketing. Yeah. (laughs) You have to imagine you cook spaghetti. I don't do this at home, but just in your head, you can imagine you cook spaghetti and you throw it on the wall or on the window and you see if something sticks. Something will stick because if you throw a lot around, something will stick. And that's what I was doing. There was no strategy. There was no proper plan. And I didn't, I I don't think I really grasped the whole flow of like, hey, you have to, you know, be visible first. You know, people have to, of course, find you and all about you and then attract them, obviously, with the freebie at, that is related to whatever you want to sell and not something completely different. And then one, once they're in front of you, you have to sell them. You cannot just leave let them go right you know so obvious in hindsight but nine months I was really all over the place and there comes always a time I think this is me like I get frustrated with myself and there's no one else to blame it's all me there's not nobody else to blame you cannot blame the economy or the coach or the course or whatever it's you we are the people standing at one way and I remember this talk with my husband I was like I think I need to get help like I think someone has to show me how this works. Yes. Because I'm just stuck. I'm just in the same shoes and I don't want to be in the same shoes nine months from now. And so I signed up for a program where I learned how to launch. And I remember the investment, $5,000. That was like a fortune. And I put it on my credit card and I was like, I hope I get my money back. (laughs) And I went into a launch. And there was like someone on my side, like, you know, that had, that were templates for emails and the launch strategies and something clicked, just something clicked. I got it. I just, I understood it. Hmm. It's interesting though, before I even started the program, I just paid the 5,000, right? Started the program. I get an email from someone who's been reading my blog posts about finding your passion. 
and the right business idea. And I'm like, yeah, this is the Passionathon course. It's now four weeks. Sometimes I run it. I was selling it for like 97. Oh and my this- gosh. Oh, yeah. right. You're that hurts my heart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was, it was a man, although I, it was, it was not like completely clear on my website that I would prefer to work with women, but it was this man. And he said, don't you offer one-on-one coaching? And I'm like, uh, I yeah, I do that. He was based in Switzerland and I was in Switzerland. I'm like, oh, people in Switzerland, they get paid well. So I was like, 1500 for six sessions. And the money was in my account the next day. Mm, That feeling. Oh my gosh. And how was it coaching? Like, did you actually enjoy coaching him? Yeah. I gave him a course and said, you have to watch these modules between our sessions. And then we were just coaching. We were just talking. He was working for Apple. Oh my God. Excellent. Interesting. Yeah. With this life. And he continued. He bought another six sessions. But it was just like, uh, yeah, you know. I love it. I love first, it. You never forget the first time. Never. You never forget your first investment in a course. No. <laughs> I have two huge ones. One was 14000 One was 25000 Both of them, I played the game like you, where I hope I get this back. But I was like, if I don't pay this back in two months, I'm never buying another course. So I always play that game with myself. It works. But yeah. so I highly recommend that. But I'd also love to know, Sigrun, when you go from that experience, which I think more really successful entrepreneurs should talk about, or the, that first year, those first nine months of like, am I crazy? Is this ever going to work? I don't know. I'm spending all my time. I don't see a return yet. Two, moving through that, it's starting to get paid 1500 Don't forget the first client, all those things. What do you think the mindset shift is? that a human being has to go through to flip from six figures to seven. Because there is, I think, a really significant gap. I don't know why, but I do think there's a gap internally in Mm -hmm. accepting that you can actually do that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, What do you think that is? Or how would you describe it? Maybe it's your journey, but what do you think? Yeah, the shift that I felt I made is that it was all about me. Like, I was trying make money for myself and once I achieved I made 55,000 in three months you know so I was like I'm gonna make the money back I made 55 in uh, three months on that all right all right so I made most of my money in three months from my first 72,000 the following 164,000 so and then 340,000 so I doubled every year and the shift that I made in this time was first, like, it's me about like, how can I replace my previous income? I have had a six figure salary. So six figures was like, I got to get there. But why would I go beyond that? Now there still comes a time like I'm ambitious and six figures revenue is not six figures salary. Outcome. Right. Very different. Very different. Yeah. So you kind of need to make double or triple of what you actually want to get paid out. So that was that. And then at the mark, I am probably around, uh, I'm in my third year of business. I think I will hit 250,000 or so. I ended up doing 340. But the reason was that my husband lost his job. Oh, okay. So now I had a bigger reason. Yes. Yeah. So the red winner. So now it was no longer me. It was my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have sons. They are now grown up. But back then we had to provide for them. So it was like the the reason, the why becomes bigger for making more money. And so I wanted, to, he had a 400K salary. That's a big so, replacement. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I wanted to, so I, I hit 340,000. I had my Biggest launch, $240,000 launch in in two months. But then we come into year four and it's not just about like, okay, I can see $340,000. I need to make a little bit more so I can replace both our incomes and live in Switzerland where typically people like 10K a month is is not like a super duper salary here. It's like middle class, right? It's like right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Garden gets 6K a month. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just different numbers. Everything is here 40, 50% uh, higher than you would uh, think of in other countries. 
And so I'm thinking, okay, I still need to make more to make this work for us because I don't want my husband to go back to work. Uh -huh. I, so there was like a, a motivation of like, I am going to do this for us. And if he wants to work or whatever, he can help me out in the business. He's been working his ass off since he was 16 years old. I want to kind of like give him a break. Oh, I um, love that. Oh, yeah. And so and there was this motivation and drive. And yeah. I went the extra mile in my launches and sales. And I was more determined to sell because I had this goal. But mm -hmm. in, February, in my fourth year of business, so I made 340000 the year before. My husband, you know, is, is at home and it's February and I'm like, I made 340,000 last year. I can make a million this year. What, and, uh, like, what sparked that in you? Did, was it, was it literally just the number? I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. Okay. And to other women, like, I do think every one of us is a role model for someone else. Absolutely. It, we could be a role model for five women, but we can be a role model for 50 or 500 or 500,000. But we're all role models. Others are watching. And I was like, if I can do it, they can do it. Like, I want to show and I wanted to take my community on a journey with me. So I sent out an email. This is the year I'm going to make a million. Here's how I'm going to do it. And then my idea was like, I would show them what I would do. The problem was in August, I had only made one third and uh, I think it was like, you know, I was busy, summer holiday, da, 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 and I come back and I'm like, ah, this is not good. And, but then I took my notebook mm. and I was like, is this, maybe I took the flip chart, flip chart notebook. Anyway, I wrote down all my progress and everything I could sell even next year because I was running retreats at the time and you can sell them a year in advance, especially to my German speaking clients. They love to plan way ahead and I saw it was theoretically possible okay so you and had things to sell that could get you to this the the seven figure mark okay I said to myself I'm gonna do it I have sent an email to my list so I better do it and here I have proven to myself that it's theoretically possible and so I launched my podcast in August okay 2000 so around this time where I'm figuring out that I have only made one third, I did my first live event in September, sold out all my masterminds for the following year. I did a launch in September. I sold out group coaching program. I sold some retreat spot and it was gradually moving and it was such an exciting time. Like, I think you'll never have it again. Like the joy of just having a goal. And I would write down, I would make it a habit to do this every week because it was not so easy, like making 660,000 in four months. I think that's a lot. It's a lot. And I started to make a habit of writing down, okay, this is what I need to make still mm. to reach again. Can I still do it? And every time I convinced myself, it was all about convincing myself that it's still possible. I sell the another retreat spot and it's uh, August next year like you know and literally literally five minutes to midnight Crush. stop it oh you stop it right now are you serious yeah. boy is that the power of intention my god I that's dinner, incredible you know, there's a fancy family dinner on New Year's Eve and I am just on my phone and I'm like I'm gonna do it there's another email going out Prices are going up and you're going to miss out. And I'm like, I hope someone is reading it because I need to go and shoot up fireworks. You're like, it's, it's New Year's Eve, people. Help me out. That's amazing. But I, hold on. I want to dive in on something because there's a human moment here, I think, that happens for people. And that is in August when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm only a third of the way there. What do you think it is in you that had you not just back off? Like, oh, you know, I'm not someone who can do that. I'm just going to chill out. There's only four months left in the year. Like, because that's a path a lot of people take, right? They get the don't want us, they call them, or the ethics. And they're like, don't feel like it, right? That's a very human experience a lot of people go through. What do you think it was in you that had you in that moment, instead of getting the ethics, you sat down and wrote out what could make what could actually cause this to happen? Like what you could sell to hit that number 
What do you think that was in you, Sigrun, that had you sit in that moment and make that decision? I really wanted to prove to myself Hmm. that I can do it. And I didn't want to fail my community, you know? Because you were told them. I told them. And that's the great thing about public commitment. I suggest everyone do it. And I have made a couple public commitments that I've failed on. So, and people forget that you made them. It's more us thinking, oh, I told everyone I would do this. Nobody's going to chase you if you don't, but Mm. that's something for you. And I must say, you know, now I have a $3 million a year business. There is nothing more exhilarating than the first million. Ah, never as much fun. Well, I mean, you did hit it five minutes to midnight too. I mean, come on. That's like, that's like a movie ending. I mean, that's bananas. That's like when you're like watching in America, right? We always have like the baseball player running to the home plate. Like, that's amazing. I could see you in slow motion watching the sales come in. That's like, whoa. So I can get why that was such a big deal for you. Like, oh, so beautiful. Okay. Last question for you about all of this. I want to know what is your favorite thing about the difference in your life between before that first million and now that you're running a $3 million business? What do you love the most about the difference? There isn't so much difference in the personal life. Okay, maybe I need to take that back. Yes, I'll take it back. Uh, (laughs) The thing is, I split my life between Iceland and Switzerland, and I was able to do that even with 300,000 a year revenue. But and even with million and 1.5 and two, I did not allow myself to really enjoy that beyond. I, I must admit it. I reinvested massively into my business. I didn't take so much out, but the pandemic did mm. help me to finally see that I should benefit some from the profits of my business because we were so much at home mm. in the pandemic. And I, I spent a lot of time either in Switzerland or Iceland, mostly in Iceland, actually. And I did not like the place I had in Iceland. It oh, didn't feel like me. It was, it was the 30-year-old Sigrun who just came back from Germany, you know, and went to Ikea and bought all the furniture there and had done no, zero upgrades since 2001. Maybe there was a new bed, but there was the same dining table, the same sofa. Right. And I looked around and said, is this person that makes a million or multiple millions in their business? And I felt I need a change. And I didn't like the house that this place was in either. But the thing is, I was not actively looking. But universe provides <laughs> a friend of mine, actually my makeup artist that I go to, three times a year or so, shared on Facebook that her sister was selling a penthouse apartment very oh close God. to my place. And I looked Thanks. at it, and in the first instance, there was this like, oh, that's for the others. That's not for me. Mm. And I get a little bad thinking that I thought that. Wow. So yeah, even but- after the success, it was almost like at the beginning, too, when you had all this experience, you're like, oh, but not me. Yeah, it's not me. Amazing. Okay. And typically, more expensive apartments, it, it's, it's, there's no price. And I always hate when there's no price. I want to know. Even if it's a 50K coaching, I want to know it's 50K coaching. Give me the price. Don't hide it. And I have to get on a call. And in this case, I would have to contact a real estate agent. I didn't even want to look at the apartment. Mm. Uh, I knew whether I could afford it or not. Like, I'm wasting the person's time and my time. And I was like, oh, it's going to be too expensive. And, I was, and, and then I, of course, Facebook is clever. You stop at some post and you probably pops up the next day again, right? So true. It's so true. They they just nail us every time. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this would be so cool. It was close to where I live. It, it was in a brand new house. And, oh, the thing was... I've always dreamt about having uh, a hot tub or a whirlpool. And it said in the ad, permit for a whirlpool on the rooftop terrace. So all the, what do you call the cables and everything was. Oh, so it was prepared. It was already like. The the weight of the hot tub was like, uh, it was, yeah, a a building permit 
for a hot tub on the rooftop terrace. No. Mac, are you kidding me? <laughs> I gotta have this. And it had everything that the other place didn't have. There was an elevator, you know, up onto the floor, which the other one just had stairs. There was a garage, you know. Oh, well, your list of things you kind of maybe almost secretly been thinking about. Oh. God, it'd be really great. Yeah. I had this. I had a list. I was not actively looking, but I had a list. And this ticked all the boxes. And even though the first instant was like, yeah, that's not for me. That's for right. other people that had more money and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why we get stuck in this. Even though we start to make money, we are still, mm-hmm. for some time, the old person. Yes. And Well, I contacted my friend, the makeup artist, and said, oh, your sister is selling the apartment. Oh, you want to take a look? And she's like, you know, very bubbly person. I said, oh, you just take a look. I, I can. And I friended the owner on Facebook. So I was taking a look at the apartment. I was like, let's see, you know, and I loved it. It just fell in love. Yeah. And then talk to the real estate agent and he says the price and I'm like, okay. I'm on, took up my calculator and I'm like, okay, if I sell my old place and right, I get some money out of my business, I actually, I, I can do this. I can, I can do this. this. I get goosebumps. I do too. No, I was, I was like feeling that with you. And I think it's that experience. It's really what I had I spidey senses is what I say, but I had spidey senses that you were going to share that you've made your life actually match where you were now. Yeah. And yeah. for everybody, that's so different, right? For some people, it's they get a personal trainer. For some people, they travel more, right? For some people, they redo their bedroom. Like everybody's got something that really matters to them that feels like finally my life matches. And I think that's what I'm hearing from you too. It's like there's an initial like, wait, am I? For me? Wait, wait, no. No, can I do that? <laughs> like the kind of back and forth dance like you're explaining. Oh, but then to actually break through and go in and go, oh, wait, no, I did this. This is this is my life now. And I'm so happy for you that you got to enjoy that. A few months earlier, I didn't know that this was my dream. Like, yeah. it was almost like I woke up in the pandemic. You spend so much time at home. Yes. Why do I not have a beautiful home that I love? And yes. I think... They were, it was piling up. I would see, you know, because at my age, friends of mine are maybe, their kids are graduating maybe from high school or college or university. And then you see pictures from the family and you see their home in the background. They was like, oh, they have such a beautiful home. And I was like, I don't feel I have a beautiful home. Yeah. Why don't I have that? Where is that? I, yes. Yeah. And I think I too, sometimes there will be a nice voice that says, Oh, the husband must be rich or something like that. I'm like, don't say that. Oh, gosh. Listen, sexism is alive and well in all of us. We have to work on it constantly. (laughs) All of us have to work on it constantly. It's a real job that we have. But yeah, I think to what can happen, what I was going to say to, because I go through that too, Sigrun. I'm like, do I live here? Because I get so busy or I'm so in my business. I'm like, we've had this couch for 15 years. Why is this still the couch? But I think there are those moments where sometimes whether it's a photograph or there's an opportunity that shows up and you go, yes, all right, my life should match what I'm actually doing, you know, within reason, of course. I also love to buy investments and I love to buy things that make more money for me and those things as well. But on the daily, I think almost to receive the message, this is what I do now. I think that's so important because it keeps the ambition alive. It keeps us excited. It keeps us engaged. And I think it's so important. And I love Love that that's how you made yourself happy. This has been awesome. Oh my God, we could talk for probably another three hours. I have a feeling the two of us. But what I'd love to do is if someone's listening right now and they're like, oh dear God, get me more of this woman in my life. Where could people go to find out more about you? Well, my website is sigrun.com. I was glad to grab that domain in 1999. And I'm sigrun.com on all social media channels. But the best way to learn more about me and my method and how I teach women to scale to six and seven figures is to start with my book. And my book is called Kickstart Your Online Business. It is not just for beginners, I must say, even though it says Kickstart Your Online Business. It is has lots of stories of women who have taken their business to seven figures, Ooh. and including my method on how I teach women to scale with courses. And normally you have to pay for it on Amazon or on my website. But because you're listening to this podcast, you get it for free. And then uh, 
we're going to have the link for you. And it's basically, you know, the game on girlfriend podcast. So sigrun.com forward slash game on girlfriend podcast. I love it. You guys, we are going to have that link for you underneath this video. If you're watching on YouTube or in the show notes, if you're listening in today, Sigrun, thank you so much for spending time with our girlfriends today and sharing your story from such an honest and authentic place so people can really see themselves in a seven-figure business owner. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.